morning, good morning. It's a good day today. It's Friday. Hallelujah. Today's the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Let's spend uh, a few minutes. I invite you to grab your Bible. This is First Light with Vincent. And uh, what we do is we're going to spend about 20 minutes. We're going to look at the Word of God today. We're going to hear from God. And then walk out in faith today and in victory. So if you're interested, good morning, Miss Madeline. If you're interested in walking in victory today, walking in power, walking in joy, walking in love, <clears throat> walking, uh, bearing fruit, then grab your Bible. I invite you. Take your time. Take some time. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith doesn't come because you knew something in the past. Faith comes, faith is a continual thing. We need to continually be filled. Hallelujah. So if you're just scrolling through and just happen to come across this, I invite you, take a few minutes. We're just going to take 20 minutes today. Look at the word, actually sit and listen. Let God speak to you. And he's going to impart something into you gives it bring peace comes and then you can walk in faith and power a lot of people are so distracted they're just scrolling through here and uh, scrolling through here and there and everywhere they want god's help but they won't take time to sit and let him do some work if people if you had a big issue in your life you know big issue in your marriage big issue in your finances big issue in your health big issue in your business and you found out that there's somebody that could actually help you, would you take the time to go and sit and let them talk to you? Sit and let them look at your finances. Sit and listen to them. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. But in our society, and, and it's also our flesh, uh, people are so fast-paced. Daniel said that in the last days, knowledge would be coming to and fro there's so much knowledge people are running through but they you assume that because you know something that you got it but that doesn't mean anything so you know Mary and Martha had Jesus in their house but one of them got something and one of them uh, was just troubled about many things the one that was running around doing a bunch of stuff and just trying to listen to Jesus in the background was di Jesus. Jesus' diagnosis of her was, Martha, you are troubled about many things. And he said, you are distracted. That means you're off track. But he said, but Mary has chosen the good thing which will not be taken away from her. So I invite you today to stop, stop what you're doing. Take, give God 20, 25 minutes, sit in his office, sit in his, in his um, checkup chair, whatever they call the chair that you sit in at the doctors or at the psychologist, wherever you would go to get help, the counselor's office, sit and be like Mary, sit and actually listen to the word. Let it come inside of you. Let it do a work. Let him examine you. Let him look you over. He's not going to hit you. He's not going to be mad at you. He's not going to put you down. But let him actually look at you. Let him talk to you. And as you sit and you listen, you know, sometimes we're sitting and we're agitated. Our mind wants to go check something, go look at something, go do something, go do this, go do that. It'll only take a minute. You go do it, and you. but when we live that kind of life, we just stay distracted. So I invite you to stop what you're doing. Join us this morning or this evening, wherever you are, wherever you're at, wherever you're finding this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some time, actually read a few verses together, let God speak to us, let Him do a work inside of us, and then go about our day changed because we let him look over, look us over. We let him minister to us. Amen. And then everywhere we go, 
we have something to minister to others. We have grace to give to others. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Then we're going to read the word. We're going to read a little bit from Luke chapter 8 today. We're, going to, we're talking about faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. We need to walk by faith and not by sight. And yesterday we talked about this a little bit, but faith is a daily thing. I need it every day. Faith is the thing that connects me to the supernatural. I'm a, I'm a three-part being, but I'm a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. And to, to operate correctly in that, I need to know how to walk by faith. Faith. So let's pray, read a few verses today, and go out in faith. Father, thank you so much for this day. We love you. You are a good God, and we thank you. God, you call us to walk by faith. We need to live by faith. And so, as we look at your word, check us out today. Speak to us. Whatever we need to hear, we are open. We give you full access. We thank you that your word is alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, it searches us out. Seek us out today, search out our hearts today, Lord. See if there be any wicked way in us. And uh, heal us, get us right, so we can produce fruit for you, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I want to, let's read Luke chapter 8 today. We've been talking about faith. Say faith, and say faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Hallelujah, say it again. Faith, hallelujah, there is no other way. Say faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Jesus said, be of good courage. I have overcome the world. The Bible says that as he is so are we now in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. So what are we even right now? We are victorious even right now. We were crucified with him. We are connected to God. We are children of God now. We have the mind of Christ now. We are saved now. We are healed now. We are strong now. We are prosperous now. We are beloved of God now. Hallelujah, that's powerful. Hallelujah, but our natural mind and our circumstances aren't, are, aren't always preaching that to us. And so we need to hear preaching that, that stirs our hearts, that reminds us who we are, and then we need to agree with it and walk it out. Walk by this thing called faith. Good morning, Miss Kimberly. Blessing on you guys. Blessing on you. Thanks so much for joining, hanging out with me. And um, keep praying. Let's keep praying that this touch people's lives. Praise God. Let's read Luke chapter 8. So we've been talking about faith. And we said faith has two main body parts. With the heart, Romans 10 says, we believe. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And both these body parts need to be functioning together. It's not enough to just believe without ever speaking. And it's not enough to speak without really believing. They both have to work together. And so we said faith comes how? By hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. So we have to be hearing the word. Then, this is what we went through yesterday. We hear the word. At step one, faith comes. Then it needs, you need to mix the faith that comes with faith. Because once it goes into you, then it gets, there's all sorts of other stuff inside of you. There's doubt and unbelief, there's fear, or there's faith. And you need to make a decision. Okay, I'm hearing this word. Bonjour, Leon. Leon, be ici. Sit. Be Faith comes, but then it, the Bible talks about mixing it with faith. It says that they heard the word, but they didn't mix it with faith. So even inside your own heart, you could hear the word 
and you in the church service be saying yes and amen, but then when you go out, you go to the bathroom, you get in your car, then the devil comes or your own flesh comes or somebody else's voice comes. And it's words that are coming asking you to go ahead and mix that word that you heard with doubt, fear, unbelief, or just uh, carnal reasoning. And if you mix that word with doubt, fear, unbelief, carnal thoughts, carnal reasoning, human mathematics, you end up with nothing. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It says, let not that man think that he'll receive anything of the Lord. So we can't hear the word and then mix it with doubt and then get powerful things. So we hear the word, but then we have to guard that word, mix it only with faith. And, and then we use our mouth to anchor that word, to release the power of heaven in the earth. Hallelujah. So yesterday we talked about being leaking vessels. We're this, we're this earthen vessel. On the outside, we have to know how to live a natural life and yet a powerful life at the same time. I have to wake up in the morning. I have to get out of my droggy sleep. I have to brush my teeth. I have to put on clothes. I have to go to the doctor's office, the dentist, the store, the, put out my trash, all that, while staying connected to, to, to faith in God. While I look out at the world and it, it's messy and it's dirty and it's rusty and there's poverty and there's sickness and there's homeless people in the street and drug addicts, uh, stay connected to the good news, the truth that at the name of Jesus, come on now, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he's Lord. That whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When we worked in the Harris County Jail, and I'd be preparing to go into a chapel service and preach the word. <clears throat> what would give me fire? What would give me power to go in and proclaim the word of God with boldness? You know, these guys, you know, they're... Big people of all sizes and colors in there, but you have big, huge guys. You have people just tattoos head to toe. You have you have homosexuals. You have uh, bisexuals. You have is it bisexual, transsexuals? You have all sorts of stuff, and they come in, and a lot of them have mocking spirits. A lot of them have uh, just proud countenances. A lot of them. Uh, just look at you like you're goofy, you're skinny, tall, white boy, look nerdy, wearing glasses, look weak. And I, I don't care what they think, and because I, I just have something rumbling on the inside of me. The power of God, the knowledge, that the fear of God, the fear of the Word of God. That what is inside of me is so powerful, so important, and so big. And, and just like Jessica, she's short and, and tiny, and they think she's just this innocent little girl. But when they sit down and when it's time we, to, to preach the word, fire comes out and power comes out. And they, and they stand at attention and they listen and they, 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 they respond. Praise God. But what is it that gives us that boldness to declare powerful things? It's faith in God. You know, while I'm going about, I'm hearing the things of God. I'm meditating on the word. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They can be born again. They can be transformed through the renewing of their minds. So when I go out and I look at somebody that, that might ha look, obviously has a, has a record, has a, you know, they have a murder case, they have tattoos, they're depressed, they're whatever. What is more real to me than the fact that they're depressed and has a crazy past is the fact that, it, who, that they can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. And, not just, and, and it's not just theoretical that they're going to heaven, but they could be born again. That on the inside of them, God will come inside and, 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 and as they start to, and they continue in the word, then they will come to the, know the truth and the truth makes them free. That they will literally be transformed into another person. That it's not theory, but God comes on the inside of them and does a work. And, and it's this close. All they need to do is call on his name. All they need to do is believe and be saved. 
So I'm walking through the, the, the halls of the jail and this is what I'm aware of. And this causes you to be bold. Hallelujah. So on the outside, you see jail cells. You see, um, uh, you know, their, their uniform, whatever it's called. Um, you see a record. You see um, mean people, mad people, angry people, scornful people, mocking people. But on the inside, you're aware of greater realities. Hallelujah. That and then as you, so, so faith is believing these things are greater. It's not denying that these, that these things are here, but it, it's aware of the spirit of life, the, the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, that everything that is seen is temporary, which means it is subject to change. That if you look at the meanest, maddest, baddest person, that's fine. I'm not denying the fact that that's their reality. I'm not denying the fact that they have maybe a, a really awful, hurtful past that they need to be healed of. But I'm aware of the greater realities that Jesus is Lord, that he paid the price for their sins and they can be set free like that. They can be delivered like that. And if they'll follow him and keep following him, their life can be transformed. They can become the most beautiful powerful person their family can be changed their community be, can be changed uh god will speak to them god will meet them even even in their jail cell god will touch them god will put thing, things inside of them god will resurrect things god will bring to pass what he originally ordained for them to be and do whether it's start an amazing business that changes people's lives, whether it's being an amazing dad or a preacher or a whatever, God can do it. Hallelujah. And so faith is being more aware and having faith in the realities of heaven, the realities of the good news. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you guys believe that. So, but that's faith. And we have to operate in that on a daily basis because on a daily basis, we're getting bombarded with, with, with things out here. And if you're not listening to the word, you're not hearing the word, you're not mixing the word with, you're not believing the word on the inside, you're not speaking the word, speaking the things of God, operating in the things of God, then without, um, it, it, the, then our souls and our minds and our hearts can get overtaken with the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, lust for other things, and chokes the word. You know, we've talked about this, that out of your heart flows the river, flows the issues of life. I'm quoting a bunch of scriptures. I'm trying to read. I know I need to read the Bible. We're going to read from Luke chapter 8. But this is what we've been talking about. Hallelujah. And so we've been talking about yesterday, uh, we've talked about, speaking the word. We have to be actually speaking it. Not enough to just know it in your heart, feel it in your heart, speak it out. When you speak it is when there's a release of power. Glory to God. If you had a gun, the, 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 your tongue is like the trigger. Your heart is where all the power is. The word of God is the, is the, the bullets itself, the bombs itself. It's where all the it's all the ammunition itself. Your heart is the, the, the gun. Your heart is where the, the bullet is cased. Where it's housed. And then the trigger is the thing that actually releases the, the you know, I don't know all the parts of a gun. The, the thing that, sh that hits it and det detonates it and uh, allows the... The, the bullet to actually come out and go do something. The tongue, hallelujah, very powerful. Today I want to talk these last few minutes. You know, all, I did all that just to try and introduce the subject. But I want to talk about our hearts really quickly, really briefly. Let's read some scriptures. The importance of guarding our hearts. We've talked about that. Guarding our heart. Proverbs chapter 4 says, guard your heart above all things. Above what? All things. For out of it flows the issues of life. If my, heart, the Bible, if my heart fails, if I have a heart failure in the spirit, then, then I'm a done. I'm done in the spirit. If I have a sick heart, then I can't be strong in the spirit. I can't uh, produce much fruit in the spirit. If I have a corrupt heart, 
then there's something in there that is hindering me from, from really uh, uh, being effective for God. And so we want to talk about our hearts. And actually, that's kind of how I introduced it today. I said, let's go ahead. Let's act like we're sitting in a doctor's office and let Jesus look at our hearts and go ahead and, and, and do a CAT scan. I don't know if that's the right wording. Do a heart scan. Scan our hearts and see, Lord, where am I at? What do I need today? Do I just need a boost? Do I need a strengthening? Do I need you to pull something out? Do I need you to realign something in my heart? And uh, do it, God, because I need a strong heart. I need an enduring heart. Let's read Luke 8. I'll read a few other scriptures. I got to be done preaching. Let's just let the word minister to us. Then we're going to pray. God, search my heart today. See if there be any wicked way in me, any twisted way, anything that's corrupt, anything that's just, that, that's bogged down. And uh, help me, God. Fill me. Stir me. You know, uh, I don't even know what they're called, but you know, um, when I just see it in movies, when they, you know, someone goes unconscious or whatever, their heart is failing and they come with those booster packs and they go, you know, they're trying to restart the heart, I guess. I guess that's what they're doing. Maybe somebody's heart just needs that, just a boost. God, come on, just boom, a revival. Hallelujah. Get it going again. All right, let's read Luke 8. Luke 8, uh, the parable of the seed. Most people know that, the parable of the seed. We've talked about that. We've talked about the word is the seed of God. It's looking for a heart to come on the inside. And then, and then if our heart receives it, we, start, we have to have enough endurance. You have to have enough endurance to incubate that word long enough for it to come forth and bear fruit. It doesn't happen overnight. So that's why we have to learn how to have uh, how to become proficient in faith because it's not enough to walk by faith for one day. It's not enough to have faith in a church service for 30 minutes. It's not enough to have faith for, th for 30 days. It's a lifestyle. Amen. That's why we have to talk about it. It's the disciplines. We have to know how to wake up in the morning and hear from God and go out again today. Go out again today. Go out again today. Go out again today. Every day. Amen. And that's how we bear fruit is walking one day at a time, little bit by little bit, but every day. Keep going by faith. Keep going. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 says, through faith and patience, we inherit uh, the promises. Through what? Faith and patience. Patience is long suffering. Faith is the thing that believes, but then patience is the thing that enables you to keep believing, keep believing, keep believing, keep believing long enough until you see it to come to pass. A lot of people have faith for a little bit, but they don't have this thing called patience or another word for it is endurance and we need enduring hearts to bring forth fruit let's read that so luke chapter 8 he talks about the parable of the sower we're just going to read the jesus's um interpretation of the parable and pray over our hearts today so luke 11 uh, 8 verse 11 says now the parable is this the seed is the word of god hallelujah so god sends his word it, it, it carries heaven on the inside of it it's looking for a heart to bring forth, to, to, to house it so it can manifest in the earth. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, but the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So that's what we talked about. We, they hear the word, but then thoughts come, whether it's their own natural thoughts, their own carnal intellect, what they learned in school what their natural reasoning is, or it's the devil himself, or it's somebody that comes along and speaks a word of doubt or unbelief, and it's looking to steal that word. So, you know, they're, they're, they hear something in, in church, and literally they step out the door, go to the bathroom, and right away, he comes immediately, and, and, and he comes right away to try and steal that word and say, that's stupid, that doesn't make sense, that's just... Um, you know, make belief, that's fantasy, that's too good to be true, right away. So that's first step, is you have to battle against those 
those things and say and and, and uh, believe and and um, the Bible talks about uh, God, uh, lean not on your own understanding praise God trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding sometimes when you hear something for the very first time your understanding doesn't have any understanding of it and so you have to just, you know it's the Bible, you know it's right, the Holy Spirit's bearing witness, you have to guard, you have to say, hold on, oh, okay, uh, I'm going to believe it. But then the, you have to get understanding, because that otherwise your understanding will eventually uproot that thing. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of temptation, fall away. So this is a second stage, people that only believe for a while. That's not who we want to be. We don't want to just believe for a little bit. It takes time for the things of God to come to pass in the earth. We've talked about this. We have to have a generational mindset. Somebody has to be willing to pray their whole life to, just, to, just to propel the things of God forward. Because the things of God are much bigger than us. I might see little things come to pass in my life, but I'm actually praying for bigger things, things that will take much longer than my life to come to pass. Verse 14, Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life. <clears throat> cares of the world. You know, fear of what's coming on the world, tornadoes, economy, sicknesses, disease, uh, my own family, all these things. Riches is the deceitfulness of riches. The, dece the lie that money is the answer to everything. The lie that money can make you happy. The, the lie that money um, could fix all your problems. And, cause why is that a lie? Because it's not true. You can have billions of dollars and still want to kill yourself. Um, you could have all the money in the world and not get healed from cancer. You could have all the money in the world and your kids still go on drugs and, and go off track somewhere. Amen? So those, that's not true. It's a lie, but, it's all, but, but people fall for it. And so they say, okay, uh, forget God. I just need to get money. I just need to do whatever I got to do to get money. Or the pleasures of life, other 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 gospels says um, they they love other things. So uh, Timothy said it this way. Paul said it to Timothy this way. They love pleasure rather than lo lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They love other things. So uh, for a while they love God. For a while they're going after it, but then they kind of like get tired of God and start loving other things instead. So this is the next category. So the first category is we got to believe the word. Okay, I believe it. The next category is, okay, get some roots. You got to get some understanding. This word got, has to go down deep. It has to make sense to you. It, gets, it has to get grounded on the inside of you. But then you, it, it, it's still not done. There's still a process going on. You're gonna, you have to keep going. The cares of this world are going to try and come and choke the word out. The deceitfulness of riches is going to try and choke the word out. And then just pleasure, love, or, love of other things. Disinterest with the things of God. Getting tired of the things of God. That's why it has to be a daily thing. Fired up every day. Hallelujah. Hearing every day. If, if I hear the word of God every day, if I hear from God every day, then I'll stay fired up every day. I'll stay aware of the realities of heaven every day. And I'll stay on fire for God every day. And then I don't get tired of the things of God because I'm, I'm, I stay in the urgency of God. There is a real heaven. There is a real hell. This life is short. Uh, there's eternal rewards. I'm aware of these things. And so I stay, keep going. Praise God. So they bring no fruit to maturity. So they bring a little fruit. They're okay. They, they, they have a bit of fruit. They're kind of going a little bit, but then... No fruit to maturity. Here's where we want to get to. Verse 15. The ones that fell on the good ground are those who having heard the word with a noble and a good heart keep it and bear fruit 
with patience. That's what we want. We want, we're going to pray today over our hearts. And this is the condition that our heart needs to be at. This is the kind of heart that we want. A heart that is enduring, that's going to bring forth fruit. And in Matthew and Mark, he said, some bring forth 30 fold, some bring forth 60, some bring forth 100 fold. And a lot of that has to do with how long you keep going with it. You know, somebody who's, who, who goes for, who, who bears fruit for two or three years and then passes away or whatever, then they, they're bringing forth two to three fold. Somebody that keeps going and keeps going and keeps going, stays on fire, keeps producing fruit year after year after year, they are good, they're bringing forth 30, 60, 100 fold. Hallelujah. And we want to have that kind of enduring heart. The Bible says in Luke uh, 24, 20, uh, 21, 26, it says that people's hearts will fail for the fear of the things that are coming on the earth. So there, you can have a heart failure. And we don't want that. Amen. We want to protect our hearts from these things. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, this, this verse, I'm just going to read verse 15 one last time. We're going to pray. The one that fell on the good ground. That's where we want to be. So say, God, I want to be good ground. I want to be good ground. And good ground isn't just being nice. It, it's having the pure and the strong heart that has the capacity to bring forth fruit to maturity. That stays free from the fears of the world. That doesn't get distracted by the deceitfulness of riches or pleasure for other things. That, that has roots. It goes deep. That's healthy. And that keeps, that stays. That, that, that stays like that long enough for the seed, the things that God has spoken to come to pass. Hallelujah. Jesus at 12 years old was already in the temple. He knew God was speaking to him. He knew that he was his daddy. God was already starting to show him who he was and what he would have to do. He was speaking to him. But then he had to continue in it, continue in it, continue in it. And then finally at 30 years old, uh, it had come to, to a place of maturity where, where God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So, but it took a, a time of incubation to even mature him to that place, even Jesus himself. Praise God. So if he had to mature to that place to have that kind of power, then we have to mature. And then he kept going. He kept going for those three years. He had the most powerful ministry ever, of course. It was so pure, so powerful. But on a daily basis, he, he stayed free from the cares of the world. He, stayed, he walked in holiness. He walked in intimacy with God. And uh, he bore fruit. He bore fruit. He bore fruit. He bore fruit. Any, dot, any day, he could have got mad. He could have decided, I'm going to you know, I'm gonna quit. All these Pharisees against me. All the news media against me. You know, the president of the United States. You know, it, it, you can't be a wimp. And of course, you, you cannot be a wimp and be in leadership. Uh, he, you know, <clears throat> he takes so much heat from either side. It doesn't matter what he does. He's going to get attacked. And, you, and he has to have enough strength. To be able to endure and just keep doing what he's doing. And that's what Christians need. Is we need that kind of enduring hearts. To keep going. Don't quit. Doesn't matter what the news media says. Doesn't matter what our friends say. Doesn't matter what my own body says. Doesn't matter what my bank account says. I know what God says. And I'm going to keep believing. And I'm going to keep declaring. And we're going to keep praying. Hallelujah. Having heard the word with noble good heart. That's a heart of integrity. You know, integrity, when they're, when, they're, um, when they're making something out of metal. Morning, Mr. Robert. Uh, when they're making, a, 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 you know, an iron, uh, something out of iron or something out of metal, they test the integrity of that thing. And what are they doing? They're testing its strength. What is it going to hold up against? And that's what we need. We need hearts that can hold up 
against things. That's a noble, a good heart. Keep it and bear fruit with patience. So we're finished. We got to finish now. Other translation says, a worthy, a good heart bring forth fruit with perseverance. Here's one translation says this. They hear the word, cling to it, and by, per, pre, by preserving, produce, excuse me, by persevering, produce a crop. We're going to. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going, but I gotta finish it up. Hear the word, cling to it, and by per per persevering, produce a crop. That's what we wanna be. Say, that's what I wanna be, God. I'm gonna hear the word, I'm gonna cling to it, cling to it, cling to it. And then by persevering, I'm gonna produce a crop. Hallelujah. Say this. Let's pray. Say, God, I want to be good ground for you. I want to see your kingdom come to pass. So I know I need to walk by faith. But to really walk by faith, I have to have a good heart, a strong heart, a free heart, a persevering heart. God, where I'm weak, make me strong. Psalm 139 says, search me, O God, see if there be any wicked way in me. Psalm 19 talks about, uh, you know, my, my hidden faults. Jeremiah 17 says that the, the, the heart is desperately wicked. It's deceitful above all things, but the Lord searches the heart. He knows it. Amen. So he's the doctor. That's why I said, we're going to sit in his chair today. We're going to let him examine us today. He knows us. The word knows you inside and out. So we want this. I believe you want this. You want to bear fruit. You want to see the kingdom of God come to pass. You want to be good ground. I want to be good ground. I want to bring forth for God. 30, 60, 100 fold. I want a long lasting, long, powerful life having an impact. Amen. And so I want an enduring heart. I want a healthy heart. But even I myself don't know my heart as well as God does. So I want the word of God to search me today. That's our prayer for today. We want, faith has two main body parts, the heart and the mouth. And we've been talking about speaking, but, we need, but today we're talking about the heart. I want a healthy heart. I want a good heart. I want a heart that can produce. And I don't even know my heart as well as God does. But the word of God knows the word of God is alive, it's powerful, it searches every single part of me. So I can trust God. I can get on the operating table and say, God, search me. Holy Spirit, search me out today. Seek me out. Is there anything in my heart that needs correcting? Anything in my heart that needs taken out? Anything in my heart that needs reviving? Anything in my heart that needs purifying? Search me, God. Anything in my heart that just is wrong programming? Search me, God. And I don't have to try and search myself out. I don't become all introspective. I just let him do the work. And, and if he starts talking to me about something, I say, okay, God, yes, sir. Yes, Lord, yes. If he starts touching an area, I say, yes, Lord, do that. Whatever you're saying. As I'm reading the word, I'm not just self, just thinking about me, but I'm open. And the word is searching me out. And at any point, it can say, whoa, look. You've been, look at this, and it starts touching an area, and you say, yes, oh God, yes, forgive me for that, Lord, strengthen me in that area, Lord, yes, heal that, Lord, yes, God, and then he does a work in us, amen, and that's a daily life thing, every single day, I'm open to him, just dealing with me about anything, correcting anything, changing anything, so that I can bear fruit that remains, amen, let's pray, blessing on you today. Father, thank you. Let's pray that out and, uh, and, and finish off today. Father, thank you. We love you. We love you so much. You're such a good God. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Thank you for touching our lives and changing us, God. And we want to see your kingdom come to pass in all the earth. We want to see your kingdom advanced. And so we, uh, we commit to this life of faith, Lord. We pray for this nation. We pray for this generation, Lord. We pray over our family, our neighbors, our kids today, God. We, we want to see them saved, healed, delivered, set free, set on fire for you. 
We make ourselves available to you, Lord. Anybody you want us to talk to today, be a blessing to, pray for, give to, help. Minister grace, peace, freedom. Make ourselves available to you today. Lord, search our hearts. See if there be any wicked way in us. Find, you know, our hidden faults, the things we don't even know. And we're not going to just become introspective and just focus on ourselves, but we just... We, we do give you permission, any area, Lord, where we need help. Help! God, we want to bear fruit that remains. We want to bring forth 30, 60, 100-fold in our lives. We want to be a blessing. So do a work in our hearts. Fill us to overflowing today. Heal us today. Strengthen us today. Revive us today. I pray for anybody and everybody watching, Lord. Touch their lives. Blessing on their hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. And uh, share this. Get it out that it could be a blessing to others. Bye-bye.